What's up, everybody? My name is Scott Paddock, and today I'm going to tell you how to sound like a more professional musician. In my lessons, in my comments, on Instagram, on YouTube, everywhere I go, I have musicians say, why don't I sound like you? Or why don't I sound like this professional saxophone player or trumpet player or whoever, whatever instrument they play? Why don't I sound like them when I play? It's a pretty big question with a whole lot of answers, but today I'm gonna give you the simplest one that is the biggest difference between an amateur musician and a professional musician. Before we jump into this topic though, I would like to ask you that if you enjoy my content, I would really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel Give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends and comments are also very welcome. Okay, so there must be some secret to sound like a professional musician, right? Well, not really, but yes, the not really is, it just takes a whole lot of practice. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of practice. But the reason an amateur musician sounds the way they do compared to a professional musician all comes down to two things their dynamics and their articulations. When you're playing a simple melody that doesn't have a bunch of notes, a bunch of improvisation, a bunch of uh, advanced technique, you're just playing a simple melody like I just played uh, with Amazing Grace, it all comes down to the way you're approaching the song. So what, as a professional musician, I'm thinking about how the notes lean into each other and lean back. I'm thinking about them as a phrase. I'm thinking about everything having motion. Just like when I talk, when I'm making my point, my, my words get louder and then I'm bringing it back. Or if I'm asking a question, it sounds different. Or if I'm making a statement, it sounds different. It's the same on my saxophone when I'm playing. Uh, I'm always shaping every single note that I play to fit the phrase that I'm trying to play and get across the emotion and the feeling that I'm trying to get out in my playing. So for Amazing Grace, <laughs> Listen to all of the dynamics that I just put in those four or five notes. So what did I do? Did I crescendo? Yeah. Did I decrescendo? Yes. So that's all I have to do is decrescendo and crescendo? No. You have to be leaning in and out. I call it leaning in and out. Like meaning getting a little bit louder, pushing the phrase forward pulling it back, giving it space. You're doing all this stuff as you're shaping it. So as I get louder, I'm gonna lean forward and when I get softer, I, I'm gonna pull back. Did you hear and see all of the movement? That's what I'm doing. I'm not just like playing mezzo forte, then piano, then forte, then mezzo piano. Like I'm not doing these stages of dynamics. Everything is flowing and moving so that the phrase flows and moves and you can hear the motion in it. So that is your biggest thing that you can do is do, I call that extreme dynamics extreme dynamics. So if I didn't do that, this is what it would sound like. That still sounds okay, but every note was the exact same dynamic value. Uh, there was no freezing. I wasn't pushing anything forward and I wasn't pulling anything back. It was just all kind of there. So that is one of the two biggest differences between an amateur musician and a professional musician when it just comes to playing a simple melody. It all comes down to your dynamics. Now the second thing I'm doing is I'm using articulation. Now this song isn't a super articulate song. In other words, I'm not like dopping notes and staccatoing notes and all that kind of stuff, but I'm fading the notes out. I'm attacking some notes a little bit stronger. I'm doing all these things to add some like space in there and make it feel really good in the articulations that I use. So take a listen to it. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm picking which notes the tongue, and I'm doing more of a legato tongue. Legato tongue means like I'm gently tonguing. I'm not trying to go. Like I'm not just tonguing. I'm using the correct tongue for the style that I'm playing. You hear that? I'm tonguing that B. And I'm using it just to put a little space in there. I'm not accenting it. Like I'm not accenting, I'm actually pulling back on my tongue so it's not so loud. Then on that E, I want that to be important. So I tongue it and I push it forward with the dynamics. So just using your dynamics and your articulations are gonna make you sound way better and way closer to a professional musician. So that was a slow song, and I picked that song because I wanted you to hear that I wasn't really adding anything to it outside of mostly dynamics and some gentle articulation. So let's play another song that has more articulation so you can hear how important articulation is to shaping a phrase as well and making you sound more like a professional musician. So this is uh, just the two of us. So there's a lot of articulation in there. Now I'm not gonna go into every single thing I'm doing because that's kind of not what this video is. I'm just trying to give you an overview of how to get to that next level. So if I wasn't articulating it the way that it should be, it would sound like this. And that's the way a lot of intermediates play when they're reading the music. They just play, oh, it's an eighth note, it's a quarter note. Okay, it gets this amount of time. What you need to do is listen to the phrase. Instead of ba 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 ba, like you would never in a million years sing it ba 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 ba, but you might play. So play it the way that you would sing it, or the way you hear a singer articulate it with the words. sounds completely different than. So I'm bringing out the correct articulations and something that I talk about constantly is goal notes. I bring out the goal notes. I bring out the important notes. You hear that? Obviously that's not the way you would play it, but you hear those goal notes when I do that. So those are your goal notes. So when you bring those out by leaning into them, pulling back from them, leaning into them, pulling back from them, setting them up with the notes before them by making the goal notes the most important notes, that's when the music comes alive. That's when you start to sound like a professional musician. So how do you find the goal notes? Usually you're jumping to them, they're longer, like they're a quarter note or something like that, or they're like turning around or a phrase, you're turning around at the top or bottom of a phrase, uh, or just playing the phrase and really listening to it, or if it's a vocal song like this one, this is just the two of us, there's words. So you bring out those important words and make those important words that are in the melody sound like the strong go-to goal notes. Okay, so again, this is with no goal notes and very little articulation. This is with goal notes, but not a lot of articulation. So even though I didn't really hardly use any articulation, uh, aside from just tonguing everything, uh, you could still hear that phrase, you could hear the goal notes. Now, the next step is, once you find those goal notes, setting up the goal notes. Setting them up by pulling things back. Pushing into them and pulling away from them. So if this is your goal note, you want to push into it, push into it meaning getting a little bit louder, and pull away from it meaning get a little bit softer. So you're constantly doing this. Like you're hitting this goal note and pulling back, hitting this goal note and pulling back. So that's what you want the music to sound. If you notice, it looks like a bounce. And you'll hear me say, 
Make it bounce. I want to hear the bounce. You want to hear that bounce by hitting the goal notes and shaping them. And that is the biggest difference between the way an amateur musician sounds and the way a professional musician sounds. Now, of course, a professional musician has more facility on the saxophone, meaning they can play more stuff. They can play faster and cleaner. They know more tricks for embellishments and scoops and turns and adding notes and all that kind of stuff. But the main thing that is going to make you sound like a more professional saxophone player is to bring out your dynamics, find your goal notes, set it up with the articulations. That is the difference between an amateur sound and a professional sound on any melody or song that you will play. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you now understand a few of the secrets to sounding more like a professional musician, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit that bell so you get notifications when I'm posting videos, and share it with your friends. Comments are always welcome. Thanks a lot. Uh -huh.